What's up guys, the Panthers here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. In yesterday's episode guys, I asked you if you wouldn't mind helping me build a team with about 2 million coins. First of all, I want to just thank you all for taking the time out to build a team. For everyone that tweeted me, Instagram DM'd me, messaged me on stream, on PlayStation Network, wherever it may have been. I do appreciate your time. There were some there were some bad teams in there. Let's not make any uh, mistakes about that. But there were some fantastic teams. Um, I ended up taking a team, not the exact team that was sent from somebody, but taking a team that I liked the look of. And then on stream, we developed it together to get a team that I think is going to be really good for this weekend league. And as you guys can see, we started off by purchasing Messi. The rest of the team is going to be tough to get, but I'm going to explain how we're going to get it. Uh, hopefully by utilizing tomorrow's rewards, some uh, cool trading and flipping with bronze packs and a few consumables, and then just gutting out the club completely. Um, I've actually just removed the squad stupidly, uh, but I'm going to put it back in for you guys so you can see. So I picked up Messi, guys, for 1.393. Um, it's fair to say as well recently, because we bought and sold De Bruyne, Hazard, Son, and now Ronaldo as well, among some others... I have lost a lot of coins on tax, probably in the region of like 200 to 400,000 coins in, in total. Um, and I haven't really been grinding that hard in terms of making coins the last like week or so. So my coin balance is depleting, which means even though I've just bought a messy, my team is, is actually probably a little bit less than it was. But I want to I wanna put the time and effort in to make sure that we can get the best players on this series. So Lionel Messi goes into the club, guys. Um... And uh, that leaves me with 4,000 coins. So you're probably thinking to yourself, how on earth are you going to get the rest of a team worth 2 million? I sold a Dries Mertens there as well. He might go up in value uh, tomorrow when rewards come out. I don't know. I just wanted to get messy now. Uh, and then on that note, this is what my team looks like currently. Uh, this is a team that I'm just going to be able to use for a little while. Once I convert Walcott down as well, uh, I'm just going to use this team until basically I can make the improvements that I want. Um, it is a shame that we can't fit Rajan Anglin and Lucas Vasquez into the starting lineup. I've just got a problem where I've just got too many right-sided players. Vasquez, Nengolan, Theo Walcott, and of course Lionel Messi. It's way too many right-hand-sided players uh, for my liking. So we're going to have to start really um, sacrificing, and, and Hulk, of course, I forgot about him, sacrificing players that I like for players that are great or having a good mix, which is why this weekend league, we are definitely using Ozil and we are definitely using Edin Dzeko uh in the team so i want to just show you guys what the team is going to look like once it's completely finished um and where where we're going to be at and how the team's going to play and again of course a lot of this came from uh, you guys and your uh, your ideas some of the back lines that i saw were very nice uh, but we got a good a good setup actually um of what we're planning to do with the team, maybe a couple of players in there that aren't necessarily outrageous good. Um, but we're going to have Leroy Sané in the team. We are going to have Marco Royce in the team. And one of the reasons why I want Marco Royce in the team is because every time I've used him in draft, he has been brilliant. Uh, and so I really, really want him in my main team um, to, to test out how good he's going to be. That's going to put us having um, Hernandez in the centre-back role. A lot of you guys say that Hernandez is very, very good. Um, I haven't used him yet, but I assume, uh, based on his pace, his stats in general, that he's going to be no worse than Eder Militao and no worse than other players. And then in at left-back, I could have gone with one of the German left-backs, uh, you know, or, or Roussillon or whatever. Um, I'm going to go with David Alaba. I think he's got such a good card. Uh, he's nice and cheap. We bought and sold him once already, and I didn't use him for much, but I think his card's so nicely well-rounded that it's going to work quite well. Um, and then in in the back line, we're not going to be using Eder Militao. Instead, we're going to be using um, Longley. Uh, he's going to be one of our, uh, well, our other centre-back in there. And then in goal, um, we could have pretty much anybody from Ter Stegen, Manuel Neuer, uh, Hugo Lloris, Ariola. So the goalkeeper will just come when it comes the goalkeeper doesn't really matter because both center backs are already on full chem so in terms of chemistry for this team once um Ozil is converted to a striker he'll be on 10 chem uh, everybody across the midfield will be on 10 chem Jekyll will be on 8 chem so we'll actually be over 100 chemistry we'll have like full chem on the team the only players off chem will be Jekko on 8 and uh Semedu on 7 uh, and the way the team's going to line up is I want to run three formations this weekend I want to run the 4-4-2 the 4-2-3-1 and the four triple two. Uh, the, those are the three formations that work best for me. And that way it will give me 
good options offensively and defensively. In the 4-4-2, uh, the squad is going to look like this. Of course, we'll start with uh, better chemistry. But in the 4-4-2, the squad's going to look like this. So Messi and Dzeko up front. Guardiola and Ozil in that centre mid roles. And then Royce and uh, Sané out on the wide spots. In the 4-2-3 one, I'm going to have to play Messi Ozil or Marco Royce as a, C a secondary CDM. Probably will go for Marco Royce because he's just a bit better. Uh, his defending obviously is terrible. Uh, I would, you know, it's it's less about having somebody as an actual defensive midfielder. And this is why I asked you guys when to build the team for two kind of uh, defensive midfielders. Um, in the four triple two and the four two three one, we only have one. Now I do have players on the bench that I can bring on. Of course, we could bring on Ducore or Rajan Angolan. So if I am struggling in a four four two, which I think is going to be my starting formation, if I'm struggling in the four four two and we need to make that change into a more defensive formation, Rajan Angolan will come on for either Sané or Royce and then can be that secondary CDM, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, and then again, in the four triple two, it'll be Sané and Royce as the outside cams um, or Sané and Ozil or Royce and Ozil as the outside cams and one of them coming off for CDM role. And the same in the four two three one, Ozil will be the center cam, Dzeko will be the striker, Messi will be the right cam and then either Sané or Royce will be the left cam, probably Royce being that left cam, Guardiola being that CDM and then somebody else coming on and I know it might cost me some wins this weekend, League. I just I want to play with these two screen cards because I just want to, whether or not we get more wins or less wins or whatever, I want to just enjoy the cards that we've grinded for. I don't want to sit there grinding for these cards and then just leave them in the club to do nothing. So even if it does mean that I only get gold two or gold one, it's whatever, man. It doesn't really, uh, doesn't really make that much of a difference. So we have got a very, very versatile bench. We've got a lot of pace on the bench. Um, we will have Walcott on the bench as well, of course. So yeah, there'll be a lot of pace on the bench, a lot of skills on the bench, good offensive players, good defensive players. So we can transition into anything if it's not working in a game. You know, if I'm up against a really good opponent, I'm like, okay, I need to make a change now. Uh, I will. But if we're obviously up against somebody who I'm a bit better than, hopefully we should be able to utilize the team in the four triple two uh, regardless. And, and like I say, we'll, we'll start with uh, Ozil and Guardiola as our center mids. And I think that'd be a good center mid pairing with Messi and Sané, uh, sorry, Royce and Sané on the wings, and then Messi and Dzeko up front. So how am I going to afford this team? We're looking at still needing about 600,000, maybe even 700,000 coins to put this team together. And I don't have 700,000 coins. I have about 4,000 coins. So on the one hand, it's very possible and very likely um, that we're not going to have that exact team. I might have to make some sacrifices here or there. But with the 50k coins from Foot Champs, um, the two 100k packs from Foot Champs, and then of course the packs that we get from Foot Rivals, uh, we'll be picking up. I won't be taking coins on that one. Uh, it's a 50k pack, a 45k pack, and a 35k pack. Um, we're going to be in a position where we should be able to make anywhere from 100 to 200,000 coins, including the coins, on a bad day. All right, so on a good day, we might end up hitting a couple of big players that sell for a bit. Maybe we make three, four hundred thousand coins. Um, the rest of the club, I have already invested uh, about a hundred thousand coins into Anchor Chem Styles, maybe almost close to two hundred thousand coins, actually. Let's see where we've got. Uh, so when we have a look at the Chem Styles, so we have got so far um, 34 anchors that I picked up at about three thousand to three thousand three hundred each. And I'm going to list those on Thursday uh, for about forty four hundred. Um, so that should net me back about 150k before tax, so about 140k after tax. So with the rewards and the 140k or so that we have in anchors, we're already going to be looking at pushing towards 300 to 400 thousand of the coins that we need, roughly. And then on Thursday, uh, when Marky Matchups comes out, I'm going to make sure that we are very meticulous with selling all of our bronzes, which should net us anywhere from 50 to 150k on bronze pack method as well. And I'm going to continue bronze pack method and drafting in the meantime to try and make some extra coins. And then after that, it's about making sure we get rid of all of our gold players. So if we actually set our play, our uh, value from high to low, I have a few players that are semi-sellable. Uh, Courtois, we could sell him to replace for the other goalkeeper. The 83s I'm not going to get rid of because they're only worth like 900 coins. It's just stupid. The same with the 82s. Um, but once we go down to the 81s, again, I'm going to wait to see if they're worthwhile in um, marquee matchups and get some value out of those. If they're not, I'm just going to discard them or list them all up for like 800, 900 coins because we'll have basically give or take about eight to 9,000 coins per page here. So that's like 8,000, 16,000, 24,000, 
32, um, 40,000 on that page. And then we go to the commons. So there's another 40K even in like rough discard value for um, the rares. And then from the commons, again, you know, at discard value, these are like 4,000 4, per page. But most commons will sell for 600 to 800, some even up to 1,000. So we're also looking again, almost six to 10,000 coins per page of tradable um, commons. So we're, you know, we're at 6, 12, uh, 18, 24, and I think we go up to like 18 pages. So we, we've got easily 60 to 70,000 worth of commons at a very low estimate of sale price. Some of them will sell for a lot more. Some of them will sell for a lot, lot more. Um, so we should be able to make the, the coins up by just grinding out the club. And if I do need to start discarding and selling silvers as well, I will just to build that team. It will leave the club empty, but I'm okay with that. Uh, it's it's going to be fun to use Messi this weekend league. As I say, you know, picking up Alaba, uh, Longley and Hernandez will be able to do no problem at all. No question about it. The two players that we might have to sacrifice one or two on is going to either be Sané or Royce. And somebody in my comment section had mentioned the first person that you shouldn't buy should be Royce because we can just put Ducouré straight in there and it resolves a lot of issues. Um, number one, we now have our two CDMs and Ducouré as a centre mid is also very good. His passing's decent. He's a bit heavy, but his dribbling in general is, is okay. Uh, his defending physical is great. His shooting is good and his pace is okay. So a chem style that will boost the right stats there could make Ducouré and uh, Guardiola as my two centre mids very nice. Uh, and then picking up Sané, it will be uh, easily done up there. Of course, I do need somebody to link to Ozil to give him that strong link uh, or somebody who's French. So I could just, in the meantime, go and buy an Anthony Martial, um, start Ducouré, uh, just start Ozil on 8KM, Dzeko on 8KM and Semedo on 8KM, somewhere around those lines. But we've got a lot of options. Uh, as I say, it's just about making making sure we make the most of our coins over the next couple of days, make sure we abuse the hell out of bronze pack method, make sure I'm, I'm clever with buying and selling consumables over the next few days to let lazy buyers and uh, trying our best to, to fit in this team. As I say, it won't be too difficult to get Longley, Hernandez and Alaba. In fact, I'm pretty certain that we'll be able to pick those up no matter what, just selling those anchors, getting the 50Ks uh, coins from uh, foot champs and then the rewards from foot champs and foot rivals will be enough to cover those three guaranteed at that point it's just whether or not we can pick up Royce and Sané so uh, we'll see but for now guys um, it's just going to be some some gameplay really a few uh, rivals games going to be coming in here and uh, I'm, I'm I think I'm about a thousand points ahead still it's at 22 I'm at 22 740 aren't I yeah, I'm at 22,740 and Rivals is at 21,990. So I'm about 800 points ahead, which is nice because last year I didn't, last week, should I say, I didn't even get rank one. I just, I didn't, I didn't play enough. This week we're already ahead of the curve with only 16 hours left. So after I play another six to eight games today, we should be well in for a, a rank one. So that, guys, is the, the intro done. A nice long intro at 13 minutes. And let's get into some action with the team that you saw at the start. It's going to be a low chem team with like Yeri Mina in form. Uh, Walker off cam, like it's going to be an off cam weird squad, um, but we're gonna we're gonna give it our best shot and see what we can do with it in rivals. So let's get into the action. All right, guys, as we get into some gameplay, we've got some uh, some just some random um, rivals games today where I was just pushing for uh, some Urzil objectives, of course, and then we do complete Messi Urzil today as well, which is of course very very nice to have him in the team. We are going to be working with him as you know I showed you guys earlier that with the fact that we already had the. Um, the Mesut Ozil uh, objective done because you saw him in the club earlier and then uh, we're going to be popping him into the weekend league this weekend. Uh, we don't have much time here today, only uh, eight or nine minutes. Um, so the first comment is from Santiago. It says, Hey, I've been watching this series, really, series religiously for the past three years. I just need a new video up every day. Just wanted to say thank you and actually tell you that the servers for me in Argentina have actually been working great. Not all the time, but most of it. Keep up the great work. Lots of love from Argentina. That's amazing because from what I'd heard over past years, only Brazilians had good connection in South America. You know, it's very similar to the EU where the Germans, uh, the, the servers are in Germany, right? So the closer you are to Germany and the Germans specifically have much, much better connectivity uh, within FIFA. And then, yeah, I, I had assumed and was under the impression that it was only really Brazilians that had the uh, close server. So if you're in Argentina and you're, you're having good gameplay, that's phenomenal. And thank you for your support over the years. Uh, we also got a rare players pack, guys, for 100 rivals wins, uh, which is quite nice. Finn says, Nep, I'm not selling Ronaldo. Also, Nep, sells Ronaldo. Love the vids. This is the best road to on YouTube. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you for the kind words, dude. I wasn't going to sell Ronaldo. 
until Jekko came along. Um, my, you know, my idea was Ronaldo is one of those guys that I could just keep in the team for 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 games and just continually upgrade around him. This weekend league, yes, he scored a lot of goals and got a lot of assists, but because Jekko was matching him for goals and assists per game, it made me realise that maybe one of a few things. Maybe, number one, Ronaldo's not as good as I think he is. And I, you know, maybe that is because number two, I just got better at the game. Um, and if it's just me getting better in the attacking scenarios in the game, then Ronaldo isn't that much better than Dzeko anyway. Or maybe Dzeko's just such a beast. I don't really need Ronaldo and I'd rather put those coins elsewhere. I had a plan. We, the team that I showed you guys the start of this video was going to be the team that I'm going to take into this weekend league. That might now change based on two things. Number one... Um, and Mbappe got an inform. Didn't expect him to get an inform. I thought Icardi would get it. But EA are super reluctant this year to give ones to watch his upgrades. This is now, yes, they gave it to Pulisic, but they have now passed up on like five absolute banker at one to watch upgrades. And I don't know why, um, but they gave Mbappe an inform. So if we do get red Mbappe, that will also change the structure of our team, right? So we'll go for Mbappe and Roussillon. We'll go back into a French back line like we planned anyway. Um, but we'll change the attacking setup just a little bit. And obviously, it's it's a big if. But if we do get Mbappe... By the way, this guy here, I gave him a goal to try and let him know that I want to do the German goals. I'll give him whatever he needs. He wasn't interested. He was out for blood. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, if I get Mbappe, and it's a big if, the team will change. But also, the new CSL players are brilliant both of them are strikers both of them have their merits as really quality players we've got a four star four star italian which means that we could also link giovinco into the team quite 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 nicely and then we've got a five star four star high low six foot one inch brazilian by the way of jonathan now he doesn't have like exceptional pace again and you'd either have to give him a hunter or a sniper to get the best out of him uh, but you could give him a hunter and get really really good pace and really good shooting out of him but his dribbling is a bit heavy or you could give him, um, you could give him a sniper and get really good shooting and really good dribbling out of him. But then he wouldn't be rapido, but he would work well as a second striker. And with that in mind, I could then strong link Hulk, Jonathan Hulk, strong link Pep Guardiola links them together. So um, I may well go and do the CSL um, League SBC and and get that Brazilian striker and use him and Jeco up front with Ozil in the middle of the park, with whoever else. And we've now got a lot of options. And I'm, I'm torn, I'm caught. On the one hand, I want to be the best. I want to improve a lot of this FIFA. And I want to make sure that I can constantly get elite finishes and, and so on and so forth. But on the other hand, I also want to have fun with the players in this year's game cycle. Even if that means taking way more losses than normal. I just really want to experience and enjoy utilizing different players this year instead of playing thousands of games with the same player, you know? So um, that's kind of why uh, sometimes I'm like, I'm never getting rid of this guy. And then sometimes like, okay, I'm definitely getting rid of this guy. Um, oh, Arsenal already 1-0 down to Liverpool in the League Cup. That's cool. It just kicked off as well. That's how late I'm recording this. It's like 7.30 now. Um, oh, the, oh, Mustafi with no goal. That's brilliant. Love that. Big fan of that. Ed Jacob says, Hi, Nep. Recently, when I win the ball back in my own box and I have a man in midfield completely open and I try and pass it to him, normally it goes completely waywards and I give my possession back to my opponent and he gets the scoring opportunity from it. You and me both. However, if my opponents never seem to do it, I don't know if it's me not noticing my opponent's mistakes or if it's literally just me. Hope you can give me some tips. Keep up the great work as always, bro. Well, thank you for the kind words. I think it's just a case of either you picking bad passes or having defenders that have bad passing stats, or are using the wrong foot of your defender to try and pass the ball. Um, you know, we talked about this from, from my perspective as well over the last few episodes, actually. You know, one of the main catalysts of me conceding goals is passing the ball to my opponent in my own third. And that's, uh, that's terrible. That's really terrible. Um, the best way to get better at that, I guess, is to kind of practice that scenario. So if you've got the ability to play against a friend, just be like, hey, look, I'm just going to let you push on to me. going to let you get the ball. And then I'm just going to try and defend against you. Tackle the ball and pass it out. Defend again. Tackle the ball and pass it out. And start trying new ways to get the ball out and up the field. I remember back in, what was it, FIFA 15? I mean, be FIFA 16. I had this thing called the out ball, right? And it happens in this year's FIFA as well in a different way, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but in FIFA 15 or 16, whenever you would turn over possession... 
you would always have your striker drop just deeper than the center, the defenders into that little hole. And I didn't even have to look. I didn't have to think. I didn't have to do anything except a little chip ball, not a chip through ball, like across, you know, square, using square or X if you're on uh, Xbox. I'd use square just to dink it to the middle of the park because I knew my striker would get it. And I, I called it the out ball because no matter where I picked the ball up in my own third, I could always, always get that ball up to my striker. In FIFA 20, it's a little bit different. It's the chip through ball. As soon as the possession turns over, the way this game interacts and people just don't use it nearly enough. And maybe I, I, even myself included, you know, it's hard to get the muscle memory because when you pick up the ball in your defensive third, you're not looking at your strikers or midfielders and you're not looking at your opponent's back line. You're looking at like you, Ed, the immediate, okay, where can I pass this to to kind of get this safe but retain possession? However, if you just do a chip through ball, what you notice, and this happens in pretty much anywhere on the field, actually, when possession turns over, right, as soon as the ball turns over, and it, we'll focus on this defensively as well because it could help you defensively. As soon as the possession turns over, your opponent's back line will step up and your players will start running in behind. So if you've got a good spot for a chip through ball, without even thinking about it, you could just bang a through ball all the way over the top and you'll be clean through on goal. It's it, You could do it in midfield third, you could do it in a defensive third. You could do it in the offensive third. Obviously, the higher up the field you are, the harder it's going to be to get the ball in behind and get the ball. Um, but specifically in kind of like your own half of the field, it's really easy to just chip it over all the way over the top and go from there. We did have one more comment. Arsenal still losing. Happy days. Uh, Zivko says, Hey Napo, greetings from Bulgaria. My question is, I've been playing games since FIFA 17. One thing that I really hate about the promo cards is that there is an SBC promo player. They're not in foot draft and I can't try them and see if it's worth to do the SBC or not. What do you think? Should EA put promo players in drafts to try them out? Well, yeah, I think they should. We talked about it before. I heard through the grapevine that they were going to this year, but they didn't. That's where we're at. This, guys, though, is going to be the end of the video. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.